There are a ton of amazing games out there just waiting to be discovered by me, and I've found them, some of them, and it's my job to share them with you, all right? So please sit down, shut up, and let me do my job and tell you about these Game Boy Color hidden gems for crying out loud. Hello, hi there, I'm TechDweeb, welcome, thanks for clicking on the video today. We all know about the best games for the popular systems, the heavy hitters, your Marios, and your Sonics, and your Pokemons, and your Barbies, but every system also has its hidden gems, those games that fly under the radar that most people don't know about. The problem is that when you search for hidden gems, most of the lists that you find all have the same hidden gems. <laughs> I love hidden gem lists and videos, but I'm getting sick of seeing the same stuff over and over. It starts to feel like we're all stuck in a loop, you know? Like a hamster wheel full of retro games or something. I don't know. So, my latest obsession is hidden gem hunting. Well, that and finding unique cups from thrift stores. I'm determined to find even more of the games that are good that nobody really talks about, even when discussing hidden gems. I've been on a rampage. I'm literally going through every game on every system to find cool stuff that I didn't know about. And I've found so many amazing games, and I have a huge list of games to share with you guys. I've already made the first Game Boy Advance video and there's more of those on the way, but it's Game Boy Color's turn now. My personal GBC hidden gems that are 100% dweeb approved. The Game Boy Color is an interesting system to me because of how limited it is. But uh, the Game Boy Color game cartridges could hold a lot more data than NES games. And that extra storage allowed for some clever developers to do some really impressive things with the Game Boy Color and push the hardware to its limit. Which brings us to Canon fodder. With Game Boy Color ports, very often we get a stripped down version of a game. Not for Canon fodder though. It's basically an exact port of the original game but with simplified graphics. And that's not a bad thing. Not at all, because Cannon Fodder is a freaking awesome game, and it's super impressive that they were able to squeeze the full game onto a, a Game Boy Color cartridge. Actually, not only that, but it's also impressive that they were able to squeeze in some full motion video. <laughs> actually, actually, not only that, but it's also also impressive that they managed to get the in-game voice samples. Well, that's cool then. In some ways, this is the superior version of the game, considering that not even the Super Nintendo version had the video and the sound bites. If you're not familiar with the game, well, it's pretty darn simple actually. It's a strategy action game. Your D-pad controls a mouse cursor, and you press the A button to move your little soldiers, and the B button to shoot uh, in the direction of your cursor at the bad guys. You have to be careful about when and where you move, and be accurate with your aiming, otherwise you'll die. So there's some good light strategy. You have a stockpile of recruits, so you get new guys if you die, but your troops gain ranks, so you kind of want to keep them alive. The later levels change things up by going through different settings, and they even have the vehicles in the later levels, I think. I wish I had a save game from later in the game because it's cool to see how the environment changes. I love this game because it's sort of a mix of real-time strategy and like a, a shooter. It's just very satisfying, tight gameplay. It's a unique style of game, and it's not something I've really seen done a lot. Definitely not the kind of game you'd see done on consoles, and especially not the kind of game you'd see on the Game Boy Color. Wait, wait, wait. Hold up. Before we continue, it's just been brought to my attention that the majority of you aren't subscribed. What the heck, man? What's wrong with you? Obviously something, if you haven't subscribed yet. <laughs> you really should get your priorities straight. Just say it. I'm a big, a uh, huge fan of Heroes of Might Magic. I had no idea that there was a Heroes game for the Game Boy Color and I was really excited to see this in my games list. And I've been playing it a ton and it's quickly become one of my favorite games on the Game Boy Color. So uh, it works like this. There's an overworld and you have a castle and you have a hero 
who has an army. And you, you walk around the map and do stuff. You know, maybe you'll find a camp of soldiers who want to join you. Maybe you'll find a shrine with a new spell to learn. Maybe you'll come across a group of elves guarding a lumber mill and you need to decide if you have a big enough army to fight them. When you get into a fight, the gameplay switches to a, a sort of chess grid and each unit does different stuff. Some units can move far and fly, some are super slow but strong, some are ranged, some are weak, some are tough. The AI is dumb as heck, but the combat isn't complex and it's still a challenge more so in how you prepare for a battle. At your home castle, which is based on your faction, you can build structures that let you recruit units, and each week the population of your dwellings grows, and you can bring your hero home to fill out the army. And you can also recruit other heroes, and each one has different strengths and weaknesses. It sort of almost feels like a role-playing game sometimes, but the whole overworld map is like a board game. And there's other enemy AI players doing the same thing as you with their heroes, and you have to ultimately take over a bunch of stuff to get strong enough to defeat them and uh, take, take their castle. Most of the stuff from the PC game is in here, including the kingdom overview, the puzzle pieces, digging for treasure. It's very deep. It's not for the faint of heart, but if what I've told you has intrigued you, or if you're a fan of Heroes of Might Magic already, then this game is worth the time it takes to figure out, because the core hero's gameplay is intact and it's one of the best strategy RPG combos that you can play. I was nuts about Spy vs. Spy when I was a kid. It, it's basically a comic series of two spy characters that are trying to outsmart each other and, and kill each other. And the game does a great job of capturing that concept. You might be familiar with uh, the NES game Spy vs. Spy, but if you're not familiar with it, I'll start by explaining what the heck is going on in this game. So there are two spies, the black spy and the white spy, and scattered across the map are several objects four main things that you need to collect before you exit the level. And once you have all four items in the briefcase, you can escape. But the other spy is running around the same map trying to get the same stuff, and when you enter the same room as each other, you get into a fight either with weapons if you found them or just your fists. So you try to kill each other and the loser has to take a little time out while the winner scurries around to grab everything. But there's also the aspect of traps. Any object in the game, like a desk or dresser, one of the items can be hidden there but you can also trap objects. You have several traps to choose from and you can also trap the door by putting an electric bucket on the door or trap the room by putting in a time bomb. It's a game of uh, cat and mouse trying to outsmart the enemy, and it's a very frantic, quick-thinking gameplay loop. The, the, the NES version of Spy vs. Spy is one of my favorite NES games, but the Game Boy Color version of the game is, is really the definitive version, because it kept the same gameplay from the NES version that I love, but it adds a new layer of progression. There are now four different locations that you can play it, and each location has eight levels. So it's just way more content than the original. Not only that, but there's also a lot more stuff added to the game. Each, each location has the items associated with it instead of a bunch of generic so stuff like the original. I, I love the art style and the bright comic art vibe that they went for in this version, and if you've never tried it, I insist that you do. My next Game Boy Color hidden gem is Hollywood Pinball. It's a pinball game, obviously. I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up including a pinball game in all of my hidden gems lists because I, I love pinball games and it seems like every system has a few really good ones. One of the things that I like most about pinball is how every table is different. Not just like in the, the shape and number of flippers and bumpers and that stuff. Each table has an underlying game within it. Like an order that you need to hit certain stuff, how to unlock multipliers or whatever. It's like a whole different game to figure out how the game within the pinball game works, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. Usually, pinball games either have just one table or like three tables. The more the better, as long as the tables are good and interesting and different from each other. But Hollywood Pinball has seven tables, and each one is quite different, and they're pretty darn good pinball tables. The theme is Hollywood, and the seven tables are based off famous Hollywood movies. <laughs> However, they obviously didn't get any licenses for official movies, so these are like cheap knockoffs. <laughs> Listen to this intro music.
It's almost the 20th Century Fox fanfare intro, but it's just different enough to avoid being sued. And then the tables are based off famous movies. Uh, check it out, here's Shark, with a very Jaws looking shark on the table. Double Agent is obviously James Bond. Galaxy Wars, that's obviously Star Trek. Ancient Temple of the Aztecs. And there's a, a guy with a hat and a whip. I wonder who that is. The tables are good. Uh, nothing earth shattering, but they're just good solid pinball tables. Each one is unique and each has their own underlying game to figure out like a puzzle. A virtual pinball game lives or dies by the pinball physics. And lots of these older pinball games hadn't quite figured out that part of the gameplay, but Hollywood Pinball nailed the physics. It, it feels like pinball, which is kind of what you want out of a pinball game. This is a fun one that I had no idea about. It's a Scooby-Doo game. I love me some Scooby-Doo. Always have. But I didn't expect much uh, going into a Scooby-Doo game on the Game Boy Color. So I was pleasantly surprised when I discovered that this is a very competent and well done puzzle solving adventure game. There's even a decent story. It starts with a mystery machine driving through the woods. We get some flashbacks of a jewel thief stealing famous jewels and getting away with it. And the Scooby-Doo crew are obviously on the case. However, their van runs out of gas in front of an old mansion. And it turns out that this mansion belongs to the son of Dr. Jekyll. You, you know from the story of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? And wouldn't you know it, the jewel thief bears a striking resemblance to the monstrous Mr. Hyde. Ooh, the plot thickens. The gameplay is standard adventure fare. You, you can walk around the levels, and when you come up to something you can interact with, you can choose to look or touch or talk or use an object that you've collected. What's unique here is that you have access to multiple characters. You can switch between Shaggy and Scoob, and Velma, and Fred, and Daphne. And that's part of the mechanics of the game, that different characters need to be in different places and solve different puzzles around the level. And the puzzles are good too. I mean, standard adventure game type puzzles, you know, finding the order of symbols and searching the bookshelves and finding hidden passageways and stuff. But there's little bits of story that tie it all together, like a, a big long Scooby-Doo episode. Actually, apparently this game is based off a Scooby-Doo episode, so that makes sense. I mean, it's everything that a Scooby-Doo game should be. There's great art that looks like it's pulled straight from the cartoon, a good mysterious story with some twists and some classic Scooby-Doo jokes, good puzzles. Apparently there's six chapters too. I'm only on the second chapter in my main game and it's already felt a, a decent length. So uh, this is obviously a game with a good amount of meat on it. I love it so far. And th that's it. That's round one of my GBC hidden gems. I have lots more hidden gems to share so you can definitely expect another video like this real soon. And you should get subscribed so you don't miss it. I hope that I showed you at least a couple that you didn't know about today. Uh, let me know your thoughts on my choices or if you have any hidden gems to suggest to me in the comments comments. I'd love to hear them. And make sure you check out my Hidden Gems playlist linked on the screen right now and at the top of the description below. And you can do that right now because we're done here. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.